good evening, uh, Rahul, and all my fellow panelists. Um, I quite love the format of uh, Converse. I think it it pushes us, uh, us away from the immediacy of news. So we let the, as I say, the dust of thought settle and we get more philosophical. So I think the way I understand, Rahul, this is that there are three issues here. One of selectivity, two of divisiveness, and three of polarization. So let me delve briefly into them one by one. One, selectivity. Rahul, for every Hindu procession that passes by a mosque and blares its music, so-called provocative music, there is a Muslim procession that passes by a temple and blares the same provocative music. But we are offended only by one, the former. So you find Jai Shri Ram provocative, but Deen Ke Gaddar, Bulaun Kya Ali Ko not provocative, why? For every act of bigotry, hate crime, intolerance committed by Hindus on Muslims, there is a similar act committed by the Muslims on Hindus. But we highlight only the former, why? Take the recent Delhi riots, for example where both Hindus and Muslims took part, where both Hindus and Muslims got killed. But they were still labeled as anti-Muslim pogrom. Why? Number two, this bogey of dividing India, and I really must address this because it's been too long. I'm sorry, but either you are ignorant or blind. The single biggest divider in chief is religion. Why are we so uncomfortable saying this? I don't understand. When the religion demands subservience, exhorts exclusivity, supremacy, when it says the believers are different, they are better, and non-believers will go to hell, will be punished. Is that not divisive? Now we know that more than 52% of the holy books verses call for the annihilation of non-Muslims. No one has the right to be worshipped but Allah, 4062. Those who deny the Quran, their necks will be shackled, 4070. Polytheists are the worst of creatures, 98.6. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah and who do not adopt Islam. Fight them until they give the jizya, i.e. tax, while they are humble, 9.29. Those who disbelieve in our verses, we will drive them into a fire, 4.56. How is this not divisive? I'm asking as an academic. I'm not trying to polarize them, but let me come to the third point very quickly, polarization. You know, I get this all the time. Why all this Hindu Muslim, Hindu Muslim talk all the time? They say this, the moment I talk of the religion other than Hinduism, they never tire exposing the ills of Hinduism, perhaps rightly so. They want to burn the Vedas and the Smritis. They want people to reject Hinduism, leave its fold. But the moment you talk of Islam, the moment you quote the holy verses unpalatable to them, the moment you redress this balance, they cry, don't talk of religion. Someone tell them, that religion must be talked about not just some of the time, but all of the time. It is the great disruptor. It has led to illogic and irrationality and murder and terror. It is the longest running dictatorial regime that has subjugated billions and ordered and extracted unspeakable crimes from them. And yet you don't want atheists to expose its ills. Why? Because you are scared and embarrassed by it. You are embarrassed that science has exposed all what you thought was real and the truth as fantasy and a lie. You are embarrassed that despite this, you still follow religion and your embarrassment has turned into hatred for those who try and expose it. May I please disagree with the, uh, Mr. Pavan Burma as I always do because let me let me take pull, pull back the debate to, as I said, Rahul, to its more philosophical moorings because we can talk about the immediacy of the events that have happened, transpired in the last week. Sure. But I'm trying to go back to the fundamentals. And this is where I think we differ. I respectfully differ with Mr. Pawan Varma because the fundamentals are absolutely clear. And what is happening over the past 700,000 years because of... Let me give you one example. Another great friend of mine is on this debate right now, Mr. Varis Pathan. He actually chanted Ganpati Bappa Boria with enthusiasm. He was asked by his party and his chief to publicly apologize for it. Now, I don't blame him for that. He apologized. Why did he apologize? You can say, Are, you know, to Hindu, Muslim, Ganga, Jamna, Tazib ki is that Niraki, apologize karna padgya, kahai kya tha, Ganpati Bappa Moria to kata, kyo apologize kya. But the fact is, the fundamentals forbid him to say that. That is why he apologized. So unless we discuss the fundamentals, I'm afraid this debate is going nowhere. Very quickly, Rahul, I stress that uh, we in this debate, we haven't 
gone back to the fundamentals because that is the crux of this debate if we are to have this debate otherwise it makes no sense because to take two examples now mr tanveer he mentioned my name he said i'm trying to balance he was not able to rebut even a single point and he seems to be insinuating that all this is relatively new it's embarrassing to tell him about mopla genocide in 1920s it's embarrassing to tell him about rangila rasool and how jina was the lawyer for ilmuddin and how alama iqbal said ki hum sab piche reh gaye ye carpenter ka beta aage chala gaya when he assassinated the publisher of rangila rasool these things are as old as the holy book that was written and as for my good friend varis pathan you know he seems to be suggesting that secularism is always a one way street when he said ki hindus ka procession mosque ke bahar kuch der ke liye ruk gaya main inse poochta jata hu rahul aaj ka example just 10 seconds there is a temple thousand year old temple in belur in karnataka that is kicking off its festivities that was plundered by khilji destroyed by khilji that is kicking off its festivities by recitation of quran that says polity uh, polities are the worst of creatures main varish patan saab se fir poochna chahta hu इन्होंने अपोलोजाइज क्यों किया जब इन्होंने गणपति बप्पा मौर्या कहा सेक्युलरिज्म इनके लिए वन वे स्ट्रीट है हमेशा हिंदू ही आगे आए